Next up, uh, we're going to be hearing from Rackspace, and they've got some really cool demos and news as well. Um, and so they're going to start off with a quick video. One of the reasons that the Intel partnership is so powerful is that we are philosophically aligned on the idea that we want enterprises to adopt this technology faster and that we want everything that we do in this space to be fully open source and create nothing proprietary. I think one of the great things about the OpenStack Innovation Center is the commitment that leaders in the community and two companies with a great track record of innovation and maturity are making to strengthen the community. The OpenStack Innovation Center will have the largest OpenStack development team that is completely dedicated to make OpenStack you know, available for everybody, easy to use, easy to deploy, and very easy to manage. We both have domain expertise, and we both have common goals, and we have you know, a common vision, and hey, in a year from now, how should people be able to use OpenStack? How should the cloud be open for people? One of the most impactful parts of the Intel Rackspace partnership is the creation of these two 1,000 node clusters. And this is just going to you know, put development on steroids for people to actually use OpenStack at amazing scale. So these two hybrid clusters will allow developers to write code, test code, and validate that we're actually able to deliver that promise in a way that will will generate much more credibility with the enterprises that we're trying to serve with this platform. Well, to tell us all about what Rackspace has been up to in the OpenStack world, we have Scott Crenshaw, who's Senior Vice President of Strategy and Product for Rackspace, and Adrian Otto, who was actually uh, with me on stage at the last summit in Vancouver, Distinguished Architect with Rackspace. So come on out and let's uh, hear from you. Oh, thank okay. you. Thanks so much. We're really excited to be joining Intel um, in delivering a thousand node cluster. If we can get the advance of the slides, we're going to deliver a thousand nodes that are available to you today. Um, we need the slide advance. We'll, we, we have a thousand node cluster that's available for you, the community, to use for free. That's an amazing resource that you have that will enable testing and development at cloud scale. And soon, we'll have 2,000 nodes available for you. And to use this, it's free. All you have to do is go to go.rackspace.com slash developer cloud and sign up. So take advantage of this opportunity. Well, what we're really here to talk about today is something a bit different about containers. Of course, containers have the possibility to transform the economics of computing through superior consolidation ratios. But there's another aspect to them that might be even more transformational, and that's the promise of instant compute. VMs take minutes to spin up. But when you have instantly available compute, you have the possibility to change the way your applications interact and engage with your users. Imagine a world where infinite compute capacity was available to you instantly, without any delay. That would be so transformative. And I'm excited to tell you that today, that dream's a reality. Announcing Karina by Rackspace. Karina is a container as a service with instant on. And it gives you a choice of native tools and APIs like Docker, so you don't have to change the tools you're using. It allows you to run your applications on bare metal, for performance, or VMs if you prefer. And it's all with zero infrastructure. You can focus on your applications, and we handle the complexity of networking and scale. Now, before we get into Karina further, let's take a look at how one company transformed its engagement with its users with this technology. I'm Andrew Erdogan. I'm the CTO of O'Reilly Media, and we're makers of technical media, so we make books, famously the ones with the animals on the cover. 
We identified a problem, which is that people are learning new technologies in different ways than just a static book. Rather than just reading about it, people want to use it directly in the browser and have an experience with it immediately. Rackspace has been helping us with a lot of the back-end technology around Docker and around containers so that we can offer these environments in ways that people can easily access them. Karina by Rackspace gives us a way to offer containers really easily to the thousands of people who come to our website. And where we would really like to take the technology is to be able to support hundreds of thousands or millions of people to come who want to learn Spark, who want to learn programming, who want to learn any kind of technology. One of the things I most appreciate about Karina is that it's got great APIs. So that if we want to create a new uh, cluster, we can simply spin one up and have access to it within a minute. And that flexibility gives us great power to be able to do a lot of different things that we might not have even considered before. So O'Reilly's made their pages come alive. Their readers can go to the web page, change the sample code, press the run button, and instantly th that application's up and running in a Karina container. The results are sent back to the web page, and the container's destroyed. That's a whole new experience. It takes education and learning to a whole new level, and it's enabled by this technology. Now, this same technology is available for you today for free. Just go to getkarina.com, getkarina.com, and sign up. All we ask is for your feedback. So we've transformed the, in, the experience and the availability of compute, but yet a lot of people view containers as complex or a little daunting. And I wonder, Adrian, can Karina change the game to make containers simple? Yeah, it can, because a few weeks ago, you asked me how much faster, how much easier is this approach with Karina than doing it the old-fashioned way? And in answering that question, it got me to thinking that any developer can do this. And I made this comment that I thought my 10-year-old son could do this. And that gave me an idea. So we recorded Jackson, my son, using Karina for the first time. And this is what we found out. My name is Jackson. I'm in fifth grade. I'm 10 years old. And I'm going to start a cluster named Foo. All right. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> so. Jackson's named the cluster, and he's waiting for it to build. This takes about 45 seconds. 45 seconds. Let's see what happens next. Okay. Oh, your cluster's up. OK. And well, now what are you going to do? I'm going to download the cluster. Download. Downloading your credentials. OK. And now you're going to your terminal, mm -hmm. right? And you're going to do an LS to see what's there? I mean, no, wait. Oops. It is an LA. <laughs> Good, okay. CD into that directory. CD. <laughs> and maybe an LS in there to see what's there. Okay. Oh, you have a docker.in file. You want to source that? Okay. Are you sure? Docker.in. Okay. All right. All right. Now you're ready to run Docker Info. So Jackson's Foo cluster is up now. And what were those credentials he downloaded, Adrian? So Jackson downloaded his TLS credentials from Karina, and he ran a little script in, in that download that set up his local shell so that he can interact with Karina using the Docker client. No proprietary tools? No. So now, do you want to run a container on that cluster? OK. All right. So you can run docker run space minus it busy box, all one word. And boom, you're running a container. Awesome. Now I'm on top. OK, so Jackson brought up a cluster, and he ran a container on it in a couple seconds. 
And he's using the native Docker client um, from this point to interact with Karina. So he doesn't use a tool that's specific to Rackspace. He doesn't use a tool that, that, that's specific to OpenStack. He's using just the same tool that you would use to run a Docker container locally on your laptop, except it runs in the cloud. A 10-year-old did this. Well, let's see what he thought. Yes. There it is. <laughs> you did it, Jackson. Very well done. High five. Yeah. <laughs> So, Jackson is actually here in the audience with us today. Thank you, Jackson. Jackson, do you have a question? Yes. Dad, am I the only one that runs containers on Rackspace? Oh. <laughs> Good question. Well, uh, Scott told you about O'Reilly Media. They use Karina. Um, but there's another customer who, um, who is using our cloud in a very big way. And I'd like to tell you about Pantheon. What we built is one giant infrastructure, one giant website platform. And we're the only container-based multi-tenant website platform on the market. The way this works is we have one big Pantheon and we run and scale your website, your Drupal or WordPress application in containers, which we can spin up in seconds, and we can manage millions of these containers now in the wild, keeping consistent 100% software, and that's what lets us do smooth scaling, because we can really easily horizontally scale you from one container to two containers to 10 containers in seconds in software and know that it's gonna work. And because everything is super standardized and is in one Pantheon, we can update Pantheon. We actually deploy multiple updates a day. And because of that, as a company, we're able to innovate much faster. We're able to build better developer tools and a better platform. And because of that, it's, it's why developers really prefer to use our platform. So we saw yesterday the example of Lithium running 122 simultaneous containers using OpenStack. Uh, every day, Pantheon runs 1.2 million containers. That's just one customer running 1.2 million containers in the Rackspace cloud. I think this proves without any doubt that Rackspace can take containers to cloud scale. But Adrian, can you explain how this all fits together with OpenStack? Yeah, Scott. I mean, in 2014, the OpenStack containers team formed the Magnum project. And Magnum is about combining the best of infrastructure technology with OpenStack with the best of container technology and making them work together. Now, in Vancouver, I explained that Magnum is now part of OpenStack and that you can create a resource called a bay. And inside of a bay, you can run a container orchestration engine. There are three choices today in Magnum. You can run Docker Swarm, Kubernetes, or now Apache Mesos. And this is great because it gives you the opportunity to use a native API. So like you saw Jackson using the native Docker client in order to interact with it. Or if you choose the Kubernetes bay, you can get the Kubernetes API as well. Now, OpenStack also gives you the ability to choose what kind of compute instances you make. So we could run, uh, can run containers on top of virtual machines or on top of bare metal. We also can use Magnum to run this same experience on private cloud. You know, just as we made containers simple, we also made private cloud simple. The Rackspace private cloud delivers cloud as a service, the way cloud's meant to be delivered, not as a complicated, outdated distribution that you have to spend months and millions trying to get installed and running. It just works. And with the operational experience and maturity we've gained as the largest user of OpenStack in the world, we're able to deliver an unparalleled four nines availability on the Rackspace private cloud. So you saw Karina running on our public cloud. It'll soon be available on our private cloud. So as you look to run your containers at cloud scale, you really only have one decision to make. Do you want to run it in our place or in yours? Give it a try. Get Karina.com. Thank you very much, and thank you, Jackson. You were marvelous. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was wonderful. Well, I just wanted to 
have one quick word of warning to all the recruiters out there. Please leave Jackson alone. <laughs> I know how you think. <laughs>